Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the units of the rate constant little k under different orders of reaction. It is important that we distinguish between the rate constant for which we use a small or little or lowercase Roman k with the equilibrium constant for which we use a big or capital K. So this is the equilibrium constant. So these refer to two quite different um, quantities. Another very important feature of distinguishing the rate constant K from the equilibrium constant big K is that the equilibrium constant by definition is unitless. So no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the reaction, the equilibrium constant big K will be unitless. On the other hand, the rate constant K will have units and the units will change depending upon the particular circumstances of the reaction involved. No matter the reaction that we are examining, the rate of the reaction will always be in terms of the change in the moles per liter, so the change in the concentration per unit time, and our unit of time is the second in the system international SI. So the rate, no matter what, will always have the units of moles per liter per second. Now sometimes this is written as capital M molarity per second, which is technically correct, but we'll see that for uh, n a number of circumstances, writing it this way is disadvantageous, and it is advantageous to think of the rate in terms of moles per liter per second. Now let's look at the case of a first order reaction. A first order reaction rate will be equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of one of the reactants, let's just call it A in this case, and this is to the first power. And the fact that it's to the first power is what makes this a first order reaction. We know that the rate has to have the units of moles per liter per second. And we also know that the right hand side has this rate constant K and it's multiplied by the concentration of A to the first power. And our units of concentration are moles per liter. Almost immediately, we realize that we can divide through each side by the units of moles per liter. And we get virtually instantaneously that the units of the rate constant K for a first order reaction are going to be inverse seconds. Likewise, if we see a rate constant reported as having units of inverse seconds, if the rate was computed correctly, then we know that it must refer to a first order reaction simply from the units of the rate constant K. For the next case, let's look at the example of a zeroth order. And we can actually write this as a real word, zeroth order. And this tells us that we can write the rate expression for this reaction is equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of A 
to the zeroth power. So we see that on the left hand side the rate is as always moles per liter per second and the right hand side is the rate constant K simply times 1. So we see virtually immediately upon this substitution that the units of the rate constant for a zeroth order reaction are moles per liter per second, which is different than the units of inverse seconds, which we saw for a first order reaction. For the final example in this video, let's look at a second order reaction. Now, there are a number of different rate schemes that could lead to a second order reaction, but the simplest that we can write is we have the rate is equal to the rate constant K times the concentration of A squared. So that's about the simplest second order rate expression that we can write. We know that the rate, as always, has to be moles per liter per second. On the right hand side, we have the rate constant K and we know that the units of concentration are moles per liter and we have them squared. But I'm going to write them individually as if we were doing the concentration of A times the concentration of A. So I'll write this as moles per liter times moles per liter. Again, we notice immediately, we see a factor of moles per liter on each side that we can cancel. So what does that leave? Well, that leaves the left-hand side is inverse seconds. On the right-hand side, we have the rate constant K times moles per liter. What do we do now? Well, we can multiply each side by liters per mole. liters per mole on each side, we can see that the effect on the right hand side is we have liters times inverse liters, so those cancel. We have moles and inverse moles, so that those cancel. And we're left, flipping sides here, that the units of the rate constant K, in the case of a second order reaction, are equal to liters per mole per second. So we see, careful, whereas in the rate we have moles per liter, in the rate constant for a second order reaction we have liters per mole per second. And again we see that the units of the rate constant are different for a second order reaction in contrast with the situation for a first order and a zeroth order. One last note, the order of a reaction is an experimental quantity and we are not limited for this exponent to be an integer. It can be a half integer, it can be a fractional quantity of any type. So the examples we've shown so far will work where we have uh, order that is integral zero, first, or second order. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.